Dr. Saladino, when you're recommending this diet, what risks do you discuss with your patients? Oh my God, guys. I get, this, this video triggers me, so let's see where this goes. The backstory here, I was invited on the Doctor's TV show in 2019. I went on with my friends Sarah and Ashley Olson, who had significantly improved their lupus-like symptoms with a strictly carnivore diet. I went to Los Angeles, I went on the show, and before the show, the producer comes in and says, oh, do you mind if we have it be sort of a debate? Uh, okay, I'm fine with that, imagining that it's gonna be a real debate where I get to talk and we actually discuss science. I gave the producers and the other doctors on the show a list of 22 references that I would be discussing in the debate. Little did I know it was not gonna be a real debate. And right before they show they said, oh, do you mind if we add another doctor, uh, a vegan doctor? And I said, fine, whatever. So it ended up being five or six doctors against me. It was five doctors plus a lawyer, as we'll see, against me. I don't think there are any risks to eating animal foods exclusively. There are no risks in terms of kidney function. Mm -hmm. There are many studies which show that high protein diets do not affect kidney function. Okay. There are no studies interventionally that show that eating meat is going to increase the risk of any single cancer. There are no risks to eating. I love at that point in the video, they have somebody behind me just shaking her head. As I'm saying, there are no risks of eating a significant amount of meat on kidney function. There's no real interventional studies that show that eating meat increases your risk of cancer, et cetera, et cetera. Obviously, since this uh, video was taken, I've uh, changed my perspective a little bit on what I eat. I now eat some fruit, some honey, some raw milk, if you guys know about a, an animal-based diet but uh, I still stand by the fact that meat and organs are incredibly healthy for humans. There are no risks to eating the foods that we have been eating as humans for our entire existence. As an attorney, I would ask you, you're a medical doctor, is that correct? Absolutely. And you are a psychiatrist, am right, I correct? Right, a residency in psychiatry. So what do you know about nutrition? What is Where any... did you gain your background in nutrition? Listen, this is, I think... No, is a... you listen to me and answer my question. Now I'm asking you I'm... to tell us where your background emanates from. I went to medical school, and I studied nutrition in medical school, yeah. and I studied nutrition independently. One of the crazy things about medical school is that it teaches you how to read articles. I'm a doctor. I know how to read articles. So have you I know done how to read the literature. Independent test? This lovely lawyer has been um, given some really quite funny monikers, which I won't repeat here out of respect to her. But uh, I do think that, that she's out of line. As, as you can see here, repeatedly on the show, I was interrupted. I wasn't allowed to finish my thoughts. I really do think I was kind of railroaded at this point. Uh, and I do think it's kind of crazy that uh, as a physician who did a residency in psychiatry and then became board certified as a physician nutrition specialist. In my medical school, I did training with integrative medicine at the University of Arizona. So I had a lot of time on my own and through formal programs, thinking about nutrition, learning about this. I mean, thousands of hours reading articles about nutrition, writing a book with over 700 references for nutrition. Uh, to just suggest that because I'm interested or did a residency in mental health psychiatry as an MD, where there's a clear association between neuroinflammation, inflammation in the brain and the foods we eat, that I don't know anything about nutrition or couldn't speak about nutrition is a little ludicrous. And uh, I think most people see that at this point. Have you written any articles that was as suggested by the physicians who've been here today? What does writing articles have to do with my well, knowledge? Well, nutrition? because I could become you. I could be you as an expert because I read all of the data and all of the um, articles on this subject. Now I'm an expert? That doesn't make... I think that does make you an expert if you've read all of the articles on a subject. And when this aired, I had written a book with over 700 references, which none of the people on this show bothered to read, I'm sure. Me an expert. With the proper background and with the medical training, like medicine needs to think about teaching doctors more nutrition in medical school. I agree but with that. it is up to us to educate ourselves. Just because there's a degree that says a doctor doesn't mean that we have or don't have medical nutritional knowledge. The bottom line fair. is you practice. <laughs> I can't get a thought in here. I can't even finish my thoughts. I completely agree with myself. And uh, I. I do believe that we haven't taught doctors how to think about articles, how to think about nutrition, how to think about the root cause of illness. And a lot of doctors are not taught any nutrition. I was not taught much formally. I had to do most of my training in nutrition on my own, but it's all out there. The internet is amazing. PubMed is amazing. Sci-Hub is amazing. We live in an age where you can read articles. Anyone listening to this can read all of the articles in the world. There is no siloing of information like there used to be 50 years ago. You can go on your computer and have access to 
all of the medical information essentially in the world. And you can become an expert. You can think for yourself. This is how it works. Degrees are really just things that people lean on now. They don't mean much. Sure, it's great that I have an MD, but what's valuable about what I do is the information that I share with people and whether it helps them. Just because I have an MD doesn't mean you should listen to me or not listen to me. Is the information I share intelligible? Is it communicated in a fashion that you can understand? Does it benefit you? Has it benefited other people? Is it supported? Can I defend these ideas? This is what it's about. Just relying on a degree, that doesn't mean much at all. But uh, she's, she's really, she's kind of railroading me at this point. Psychiatry, am I correct? I practice medicine. I you think practice that the, psychiatry, I is that correct? medicine. So what makes you an expert in this? <laughs> This is crazy. She just wants to say, you're a psychiatrist, inferring that psychiatrists don't know anything about nutrition. Neuroinflammation in the brain is the root cause of so many of our psychiatric illnesses. And that starts in the gut. That is intimately connected with the foods we eat. How can she possibly suggest that someone who's thinking about mental health or did a residency in psychiatry doesn't have the ability to think about nutrition, doesn't have the jurisdiction, if you will, in medicine to think about nutrition? This is ludicrous. Because an expert in what? She won that one, according to the audience. An expert in understanding human physiology? This is medicine. The separation of humans into organ systems doesn't serve the patient. To say that because I'm a psychiatrist, I don't know about nutrition is a completely- I didn't say that. That's Your what you expertise were inferring. is the mind. That's what you were mind. inferring. Well, where does the inflammation come from that causes depression and anxiety? It comes from the body. It doesn't come from the brain. It's a scary thought process that is all you need to do is read articles. I've actually made a good point here and she won't listen to it. <laughs> she, I'm, I'm proud of myself. I haven't watched this video in years because it's uh, it was a traumatic uh, moment for me. But I think I just made a great point. Like the inflammation in the brain comes from the body and that's where you eat food. But she's not listening to that. She just wants to go back to the point that she felt like she got me when she got the fake audience applause and uh, tell me that just because I read articles it doesn't make me an expert. Well, I'm not sure how you become an expert if you don't just teach yourself. It doesn't come from the brain. It's a scary thought process that is all you need to do is read articles to make you an expert. How I wanna know what kind of testing you've done, what kind of data you have, what you yourself have found regarding these issues. I'm not sure. Other I'm, than what reliance is on other people's I'm not mind. sure I understand your question because that's how You don't wanna listen to my question because I'm, you know I'm right. No, me, you're wrong. Can I ask you a question? What, when you talk about the Oh wait, <laughs> this is crazy. This is how it works on these shows. They won't actually let me finish talking to her. They're gonna let somebody else jump in and hit me before I can actually defend my position. They totally set me up for this, these guys. Animal diet. Wait when, a second, when you I talk need to about... be given the floor to respond to this, this isn't fair. Okay. Right? Anyone isn't gathers fair. data by reading articles. You go, Paul Saladino, I'm proud of myself. I was like, don't, don't, don't change the subject. Anyone gathers data by learning. What you're suggesting is not a fair criticism of me. I'm a board certified physician. Somebody else jumping in. Nutrition specialist. Oh, there's a board certified physician nutrition specialist sitting next to me. Well, I happen to be a board certified physician nutrition specialist too. Right. I have been practicing nutrition. She gets applause for that. Exclusively, I'm trained as an internist. I was originally board certified in internal medicine. I have spent 20 years. You've been dallying in this for a few years, reading articles. I've been doing it, working with patients. My oath is first do no harm. And I am not a plant-based person. I don't advocate only plants. I think meat, I think there is nutrient density. I think getting rid of the processed foods and the toxins in processed foods, that's what's damaging the, the gut. Show me the study that meat is dangerous. Show me the study that broccoli is dangerous okay. to lupus. <laughs> she gets a little triggered here. Show me the study that broccoli is dangerous for humans. Well, compounds in broccoli, isothiocyanates, specifically sulforaphane, inhibit the absorption of iodine at the level of the thyroid. That's not a good thing for humans. We know that these compounds in plants are there as defense chemicals, but um, she, they won't let me get to this. And this, I paused the video right here. Her face okay. kind of says it all. Uh, and to be fair, let's just tell the whole story here, guys. Um, after this recording, I saw this doctor, Dr. Melina Jampolis, in the, uh, in the green rooms, and, and she lost it with me. Security had to be called because she was just screaming at me. Uh, she was so triggered by what I was saying. This is what she said to me in the green rooms off camera. She said, she said, doctors like you, you come in, you're handsome, you get people to pay attention to you and, and you're just, you're not right. And I said, well, I, I don't know if that's a compliment or what, but uh, I think that we should have some discussion about this. And then she goes on to say, 
there's no vitamin K in meat and there's no vitamin C in meat. And I thought, what, what about vitamin K too? What are, you, what are you talking about? And there's vitamin C in liver, there's vitamin C in spleen, there's vitamin C in muscle meat. They clearly don't understand nutrition as much as they claim to. And then as we were walking outside of the building, security got called a second time. <laughs> this is crazy, guys. So security got called because this doctor like lost it with me. Um, honest to God truth. Oh. Hey, wait, 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 wait. I will show you the study. Can you please just... Oh, they didn't even actually let me show the study. They, they're going to have the other doctor. This is how it works with five-on-one guys. I asked Melina Jampolis to be in my podcast. That offer still stands. I asked Travis Stork, the other doctor. That offer still stands. Any of the doctors that are on this show right now, even the lawyer that's on this show, uh, the offer still stands. Come on my podcast. I will have the most respectful debate in a civil fashion with you ever. I appreciate all of your criticisms. I just think it's hilarious in retrospect how they super ganged up on me here. The name of one reputable medical journal that supports the meat diet. That's what they are asking. Right. Thank you. So in 1930, there was a study published in the British, the British Medical Journal of a, uh, a year-long, a year-long investigation of two people in Bellevue Medical Hospital who were eating an exclusive carnivore diet. And during that period of time, these people experienced no negative effects, no dangerous changes in blood pressure, kidney function. They only experienced good things, a little bit of weight loss, and came out of the study saying that they felt better than when they started. So there have been prolonged, detailed studies of a full carnivore diet. It's a one-year study known. from 1930. Of two people. Has there been? A one-year study from 1930. So they're going to talk about 1930. I would challenge any of the doctors on this show to find as detailed a study as that one from 1930 at Bellevue Medical Hospital. These were two people, one of which was Vilmer Stephenson, who spent time with the Inuit. They spent the majority of their time, I think toward the end they were in and out of the hospital, but they spent so much time under observation. This is not like how studies are done today. A one year study with direct observation and careful monitoring of exactly what they were eating. This is actually a pretty incredible study and they want to minimize the value of it just because it's from 1930. Well, I got news for these doctors. Again, please come on my podcast. There are so many well-done studies from the 1930s, 1940s, 1950s that we've forgotten about today because they're old. Anything since 1930 with more than two people. There was a study at Harvard done looking at the carnivore diet with regard to gut flora. And so they put people on a carnivore diet for one week and they looked at changes in gut flora and they didn't see any change in the microbiome in terms of alpha diversity. There was no one week. Literally, there are thousands and thousands. I love the part where this guy's name is Travis Stork. Uh, he, he puts his hands on his head. There are thousands of studies. Thousands of studies that show the benefits of, of fruits, vegetables, nuts. And, and we're not saying one. meat's bad for you. Right. I ate meat last night. But you <laughs> keep getting back to, no one is saying meat is bad for you. They're getting kind of triggered here. <laughs> what we're saying is if all you eat for your whole life. <laughs> He's kind of losing it right now. Ever is just meat. That's not good. Do I don't have know? to be a doctor. I'm just like, flat. I'm blown away right now. <laughs> I don't have to be a doctor. It's, it's interesting. There are a lot of people who have improved their autoimmune symptoms by eating only meat and organs. Again, to be fair to Travis Stork, uh, I included fruit in my diet later on, honey, raw dairy, and I feel great. But I think that for a lot of people, there are foods that we traditionally think of as healthy, whether it's vegetables or grains like rice or oats or wheat or bread, we think of as healthy that can cause issues. I've done a lot of content around oxalates and foods like spinach or almonds or turmeric. There are so many of these foods we think of as healthy for people that can be problematic. So if you can eat vegetables and you don't have problems, great, eat your vegetables. But if you have an autoimmune issue, my message consistently for many years now has been consider cutting out some of the vegetables. Start with the grains, start with seed oils, processed sugars. But I think that things like oatmeal, wheat, even rice for some people, not that great. If you cut out the grains, the seeds, the nuts and beans, those seem to be the most problematic things. Again, if you can eat these foods and you don't have issues, fine. But what I'm trying to tell people is that there are a lot of us who continue to suffer because we're eating foods that we think are healthy. Sure, we know that things like seed oils, processed sugars, processed foods, these are not healthy for humans. But a lot of us are eating foods we think of as healthy. Spinach, that can cause problems with kidney stones. In fact, I met a guy surfing the other day and he said, he was young, my age, 45, 46, muscular guy. He said, man, I gotta pick your brain. 
I got kidney stones. And I said, what type of kidney stones? Calcium oxalate, he says. Well, that's related to oxalates, calcium oxalate kidney stones. And I said, did they tell you not to eat spinach? And he said, no, they didn't tell me not to eat spinach. I said, how much spinach do you eat? He said, well, I eat a pretty significant amount of spinach. <laughs> so this is the problem, guys. And at this point in the show, I think I was defending this idea that meat and organs are good for humans. And for some people like Ashley and Sarah, who are on the show with me, the removal of all other foods gives you a lot of clarity into what's causing issues and can be significantly helpful for autoimmune issues. I don't think everybody needs to eat only meat for their whole lives. This is on the doctor's YouTube channel. The comments kind of say it all. I mean, yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty hilarious. So anyway, um, I'll read, I don't know. I'll, I'll pick a comment here and, and read it. The former judge is an absolutely unbearable woman who treats another human being like that. So disrespectful and closed-minded. Also reading all of the literature on a subject is exactly in caps how you become an expert. So thanks to the doctor's TV show for having me on again open invitation to all of them to come on my podcast. I think that the discussions are interesting and enlightening for everyone. And like I said, guys, when this happened, it was pretty traumatic for me. I wasn't expecting this at all. It was my first time on TV, but I think that in the end, um, it's been a very positive thing for a lot of people to see me talk about it, at least there. And I've done a lot more talking about meat, organs, now fruit, honey, raw dairy, and animal-based diet since then. In retrospect, pretty good experience, but in the moment, it was pretty stressful.